Hey everyone, today we're looking at Dead by Daylight's killers, and considering how much the entity changed them through its influence. This is considering how the entity affected their minds, their lives, but also how it physically changed them, before and when they arrived in the realm. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the characters that were largely unchanged by the entity. Both of our chainsaw characters, Bubba and Billy, are pretty much the exact same before and after the entity's intervention. The one clear change made to Hillbilly is his superhuman speed that he briefly gets when entering a sprint. That's about it though. They're both more a product of their horrible families if anything, and less so the entity's influence. For both of our ranged killers, Huntress and Deathslinger, we have a similar situation. Huntress was not really manipulated by the entity before arriving in the realm, nor was the Deathslinger. Slinger's power centers around weapons he himself created, and Huntress appeared to have been superhuman prior to the realm too. So physically, they don't seem to have been changed changed by the entity either. Clown is a fairly straightforward one too. Clown was just kind of a murderer before the entity even looked his way. The clown's power, his afterpiece tonic and antidote, is entirely created by him, with the entity only providing him an unlimited supply. Clown is basically the same as he was before the entity. Legion are kind of unique, being four characters technically. Both Frank and Julie though are pretty unchanged by the entity. A bit like Clown, they kind of just wanted to go around and do bad things. The entity didn't really push that on them. Frank and Julie, I would say, were more changed by one another. The entity did give them weaponized rage with their feral frenzy power, I suppose. Even that though seems largely based on their experience and study of knives and stuff, going off of their add-ons. So I think it was mostly them, and not the entity, that made them the way they are. Finally, for this section we have our large number of licensed characters. Pig is basically the same. The main difference the entity made to her is that she is now capable of literally roaring when she does an ambush, which is, you know, an interesting change. <laughs> For Demogorgon, Shape, Executioner, Cenobite, and Onryo, they all appear to be greatly nerfed from their pre-realm state. The entity didn't intervene with their lives prior to entering the realm, but upon entering it, it has most definitely nerfed them, mostly to make the trials work. These characters are otherworldly, immortal, and just straight up too powerful for the trials, and so have all received a large nerf. They do still retain many of their core powers in some form, however, and in the cases of some, are even capable capable of breaking the rules whenever they please. So changed, but not really. The entity doesn't seem to have that much power over them. Next up we have the mostly unchanged characters. Trickster seems to have been largely unchanged, and largely uninfluenced by the entity. Trickster was kind of just into killing before getting into the realm. He didn't seem to have been coerced into doing it. In terms of his power and physicality, I think he also remains pretty unchanged. The one thing I'm unsure of is his knives, and the way he throws them. When we see him performing in his trailer, he is very quick with his hands. However, the way he rapid fires knives in game is a little more than being quick with your hands, and suggests some kind of substantial buff in that area from the entity. Still, I would say mostly unchanged. The biggest change to Ghostface was just the floaty bits of his costume, showing his connection to the entity. He's mostly unchanged though. Much like Trickster, he was just kind of a killer prior to the realm. It didn't take much coercion or manipulation. Ghosty just kinda was okay with it all. When he gets to the realm, he literally just smiles to himself. Like he doesn't care he's just been kidnapped by an emotion sucking spider god. So you know, uh suit yourself. The Nightmare, unlike the other powerful licensed characters, I would argue was more substantially affected by the Entity's influence. The Entity didn't really interfere with his life or anything, but it did majorly impact his power. It even mentions in the lore, his powers were tempered in some ways and focused in others. To me, they just seem tempered to be honest. I would not say any aspect of his power is any stronger than his film counterpart. Freddy got by far one of the largest nerfs from the Entity when it came to both the complexity and strength of his power, and also his autonomy over it, to be honest. Otherwise, he is basically still Freddy, with similar dream demon powers. Nemesis is in a similar situation too. I don't really have much to say about it, but it's obvious his adaptive and mutating abilities are greatly nerfed, more so than other licensed characters. His mutation is restricted to only one arm. He can't go to the crazy size or forms he takes in RE3. So yeah, definitely nerfed 
more so than maybe some of the other more powerful licensed characters. Doctor is another character who didn't really need to be convinced or manipulated in any form. He was just pretty up for going to the realm it seems. Upon arriving, he was physically changed. Although this too seems to have been pretty voluntarily. Doctor's power, Carter's spark, is said to be an inexhaustible spark in the Doctor's heart, allowing him to create electricity. A pretty big change to his biology there, but certainly one he wasn't against. He is comfortable it seems in a messed up way, and is continually maniacally laughing. In terms of his physical appearance, he does look pretty different to his pre-realm self. Although this seems to be mostly self-inflicted, from his years of research on his subjects, and also himself. And so not as much the entity's doing. His headgear in particular appears to be either his own doing, or possibly the entity's in that case. Still, he's pretty much the same guy he always was, before and after the entity. Hag is changed quite considerably by both the entity, but also the hexes and their magic. It's unclear the weighting of each in terms of their influence over the Hag's power, and her altered appearance. After messing with the hexes, and getting captured by cannibals, Lisa has her flesh torn from her, and she is on the brink of death, when she scratches a hex into the mud, and the entity answers her plea, resulting in how she appears in the realm. It's not obvious, however, if the hexes are a separate magic to that of the entities, and if so, if the entity can be blamed for anything prior to her getting taken, and even her altered appearance, as this is mostly down to her cruel captors. Don't get me wrong, Lisa is an entirely different person before the realm, but it doesn't actually seem to be the entity's fault, as it were, but instead the magic of the hexes, and basically just really bad luck on Lisa's part. If the entity does have a hand in the hexes though, then yeah, the entity is to blame, and did most definitely change her. Nurse can be seen to be changed purely from physicality alone. After the massacre at Crotus Pren, and the resulting burning down of it, she was presumably greatly scarred and burned. Upon entering the realm, she was then transformed into a ghostly figure almost, wielding breaths as power, as well as floating, and having multiple new abilities that her human self definitely did not have. Again, a bit like Hag though, her life events, although tragic, don't seem to be down to the entity, but just really bad luck. Her husband dies, she works at Crotus Pren as her only option, and she's subjected to decades of horror as a result. It is possible that the entity is intervening in this time though. We get a brief glimpse of this possibility, with a section of her tome law. She passes the catatonic boy in his wheelchair, staring deep into the walls. He gazes in her direction, though his eyes look through her. Has the trial begun? He lets out a scream, pausing as if having startled himself, then laughs. This question from one of the patients of Crotus Pren, and the subsequent scream, much like Nurse's blink, suggests maybe the entity was watching throughout Sally's life, even planning out her eventual power. This one is really tough to judge though, as it seems largely down to circumstance more than the entity still. Okay, now onto the mostly changed characters. The other two members of the Legion, Susie and Joey, I would say have been at least slightly changed by the entity. Prior to the realm, in their tome cutscene, where we see them kill the store clerk, it's evident, even through their masks, that they're totally not okay with what just happened. Largely, these two are manipulated by Frank and Julie, but I think also upon being taken by the entity, they were further threatened to take part in the trials, until they became just as bad as Frank and Julie, both of them turning from misled teenagers, to potentially being even more twisted than Frank and Julie, Joey with his far more deadly karambit and expressionless mask then Susie with her unnerving smile beneath her mask, and makeshift ruler blade. These two were greatly misled, but now in the realm, seem like entirely different people because of the entity. Oni is a tough one. Despite all his murdering and such, he weirdly is against the demon he has become in the realm. The name of Oni Yamaoka, given to him by a lord, is something he now embodies, and was a name he previously hated. The entity has very much used the Oni's anger to its favour. Most features of the Oni are specifically to make him angrier. His wearing of the Oni mask isn't his choice, but the entity almost mocking him, making him wear it. The mask itself even quotes the Lord's phrase of Oni Yamaoka. The Oni is also quite substantially different physically, as a result of the entity. He embodies an Oni now, as depicted in Japanese folklore. He has blue skin, clawed hands, a third eye, and a horned mask. His anger and bloodlust has also been formed into 
a tangible power, where he absorbs blood to gain power himself. I don't think he's been completely changed by the entity, as he was still very much a killer prior to the realm. His motivations to go on his murder spree to begin with were also very much his own choice too, but the entity's intervention is still obvious, especially in his physical appearance. Twins are kind of an interesting one. I think I would say they're mostly changed by the entity, although largely indirectly. The entity does not seem to touch their lives at all really before the realm, but one way it kind of inadvertently does is through the Black Veil, a cult who worships the entity. This same cult capturing and experimenting on the twins and causing the death of Victor. Although this isn't technically the entity, and I don't believe the Black Veil works on the entity's command, but still there wouldn't be a Black Veil if there wasn't an entity. So the entity does influence their lives, even if not directly, in a pretty major way. Physically, there are also some pretty major changes to the twins. Victor is alive again, they are no longer conjoined, and Victor further has the ability to continually rebuild himself from Charlotte. All of this is the entity's doing, and the entity's changes. For Trapper, it isn't certain how much the entity intervenes with him. It's evident for sure that his physical appearance is greatly altered as a direct result of the entity. The physical damage seen over Evan is the entity's doing. Prior to the realm though, it's uncertain I think whether Evan had an inherent inner evil, was manipulated by his father, or the entity manipulated them both. I kind of think it's a bit of everything, for the sole reason that Evan goes from a nice, creative teenager in his tome to the bear-fighting, bone-mask-wearing, cleaver-wielding, mass-murderer. By the time he's in the realm though, something definitely changed him. Whilst I do believe the entity did change him a lot, I do think he was also greatly influenced by other factors too, such as his cruel father, the Macmillan workers selling him out, and the deaths of his mother and uncle. Okay, now onto the completely changed characters. The entirety of Blight's existence is pretty much spent searching for the entity and the realm, using his experience with his serums to help him get there. After he drives himself insane, clawing into the walls of a cave, the entity finally gives in, allowing Talbot into the realm. So although Blight's story isn't really changed by the entity's intervention, the existence of the entity does also cause Talbot to do the things he does. It's indirect, but the entity undeniably changes Talbot, and almost his entire purpose, physically destroying him in the process. Plague, I believe, was definitely manipulated by the entity, and changed greatly as a result. A large amount of where she ended up was down to her almost blind faith. Not complete, but pretty much blind faith, in a god that was never really there. However, this belief in a god, which ends up being the entity, is still very much the entity's fault, and did change Adiris. The entity whispered to her, and from what it seems, it promised to save her people, in exchange for her service to it. When all is said and done, Adiris is a different person because of the entity. Physically, she is greatly altered, and she is further manipulated too, although not as forcefully as most of the other killers. Her manipulation is subtle, and plays into her faith, with the entity whispering to her, confirming the existence of her gods, although really it's just the entity. There's a specific point in her tome lore, where she's about to abandon her faith entirely, and then the entity whispers, completely altering the events of her life. So yeah, the entity definitely changed her, she just maybe doesn't quite know the extent of this change. Spirit's life was changed entirely by the entity, and you could probably argue quite a bit by her ancestor, Kazan too, who set in motion the downfall of the Yamaoka family name, that Rin's father tries so hard to preserve, leading to his snap and the killing of Rin. We do know that Rin's father though was also being whispered to by the entity, suggesting it originally wanted him. Rin is shown to have brief bursts of violent tendencies, where she can feel her ancestors and lashes out. Equally, she expresses how much she doesn't like the way she feels when she is connected to them. All in all, she's not a killer. Even when she is killed by her father, it can largely be put down to the entity preying on her bloodline. Upon arriving in the realm, she is clearly physically changed too. Much like Oni, she has blue skin, her limbs attached by some form of magic, and she has supernatural power, and a drive for
for revenge, a stark contrast to the person she once was, and a result of the Entity's influence. Wraith has a very tragic backstory, and appears to have the Entity following him since his childhood. It's evident in his Tome Law, after the death of a mentor, where it mentions, he feels darkness like a tendril from another world take hold of his young, innocent heart. From this point on, it seems the Entity was set on taking him. When he moved to America to start a new life, the Entity presumably had a hand in where that new life started, landing him into the employment of the evil Azarov, a criminal who crushed and disappeared people for money, Philip being the one who did this, unknowingly. In the end, Philip kills Azarov and is taken by the fog. In the realm, he is completely different from what he once was, as a result of the Entity. His expressions are gone, left only with a blank stare. His humanity seems gone too, left only with the memory of death, and the Entity's stalking and inescapable evil. Artist, I would argue, is the most obvious case of a character's life being completely changed by the Entity. Carmina is almost entirely manipulated throughout her life by the Entity on multiple occasions. It saves her, it gives her hope, then it tears it all away and makes her think it's her own fault. There really is no way to argue that the Entity didn't have influence and direct change to her life and its events. Physically, she is clearly altered too. Again, the Black Veil's existence is down to the Entity, and they're the ones who cut her hands off and tongue out. Then the Entity is the one to provide her with her new inky hands and crow base powers. It's kind of terrifying just how much the Entity does to Carmina, changing so much about her. Alright, well, on that dreary note, <laughs> that's gonna do it. As always, be sure to drop your own thoughts down below. Thanks, and goodbye.